Last week, 28-year-old Stephen Johnson and 30-year-old Stephanie Trammer were found bludgeoned in a local woodland. Prime suspect and local Dunwich resident Jack Kane, who police arrested 24 hours after the discovery of the bodies, is currently in court today attending a plea and trial preparation hearing. The hearing is expected to be somewhat of a formality, where the key facts are presented and a plea is made by the defendant. Should that plea be not guilty as expected, a trial date will then be set. Of these 16 stab wounds, five by themselves would have proved fatal. Steve Johnson received 13 stab wounds, mainly to the chest. However, there were several abrasions to the palms of his hands, which would suggest defensive wounds. The fatal blow was a stab wound to the aorta, the large blood vessel coming from the heart. Your Honour, due to the heinous nature of this crime and the circumstantial evidence against Mr. King and his lack of alibi, there is sufficient evidence for prosecution. Anything further to add? No, that is all, Your Honor. Mr. Kane, before we proceed, I must advise you for the second time that given the very serious charges, it is in your best interest to enlist legal counsel in this matter. I'll be representing myself, Your Honor. I have nothing to hide. As you wish. Before we move to a plea, do you have any evidence you wish to submit that would contradict what the prosecution has presented? Not at this time. I'd just like to enter a plea of not guilty. As you wish. Would both counsels approach the bench, please? The grievous nature of this crime is clear. All of the evidence you have collected against Mr. Kane was obtained after an illegal arrest. Order in the court! I have no choice but to move to dismiss the case. Your Honor, you can't possibly let this man go. He is a danger to us all. Then perhaps the police should have read him his rights when they arrested him. The search of Mr. Kane's car, his house, the interviews, all of it is now inadmissible as evidence. This case is dismissed. I order the accused to be released with immediate effect. didn't read him his rights. What the fuck is this? Amateur hour! I chased him down. We had armed police out. In all the commotion, I just made a mistake, all right? Fucking right you made a mistake. Now my son and this poor kid's sister won't see justice! Scum like Kane won't keep their nose clean for long. And when he steps out of line, I'll be there to take him down. You think he'll kill again? I don't know. But he's capable of it. Well, then we're all in danger. Look, I'll keep this town safe. <laughs> yeah. Like the good job you did the first time. Oh, fuck you, Joe. Listen! 
If that scumbag hurts anyone else, heads are going to roll. Look, Matt, you made the biggest mistake of your career here, plain and simple. You want my resignation? You offering it? Do I have another option? There are always options, Frank. Doing your job is an option. What is your job, Frank? Can you tell me that? Uphold the law, keep the town safe. Keep this town safe, precisely. We all wanted justice in this case. The law has not given us that. Does that mean that the duty to protect Dunwich goes out the window? No. Johnny, you tell me, son. What does justice mean for you? I want to see Kane suffer for what he did to my sister. What about you, Joe? No parent should ever bury their own child. It's not natural. But that piece of shit deserves to die for what he's done! I agree. So what are you saying, man? Well, all of us go back a long way, Frank. I may be the mayor of this town, but I'm also your friend. Friends should help each other, don't you think? Oh, yeah. So, I'm going to help you save your job, Frank. Joe? Johnny? We're going to get you justice. And how do you propose to do that? Zombies? Yes. They are my servants. This soul killer takes men from their graves to be his slaves. His instruments of terror, and now this fiend plots to possess a woman. Is this a Halloween party? It's time to pay for what you did, Kane. You got something to say? Look down at me and you see a fool. Look up at me and you see a god. Look straight at me and you see yourself. I'm not like you. None of us are. Pull that trigger and you become guilty of what you accuse me. The question you have to ask yourselves is, can you live with taking a life? I'll not only live with it, I'll wake up smiling every fucking day knowing you're gone. Is that gonna bring your kid back? Shut the fuck up! Trying to humiliate me? No. I'm trying to kill you. <laughs> Do it, Johnny. Do it for your sister. Do it!
Get the shovels. This goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. We never speak about this to anyone, ever. If anyone asks, Kane left town. We all agreed on that? Yeah. Johnny? What? We never speak about this to anyone, ever. Agreed? Agreed. You've been awfully quiet, Frank. Promise that you never tell anyone about this for as long as you live. Let me hear you say it. I promise not to tell anyone about this for as long as I live. Now one minute after midnight and it's officially the day when the veil between the living and the dead is at its thinnest. This is WKB Dunwich and I'm Jennifer Hollister signing off, dear listeners, with this golden oldie. Happy Halloween. Hey baby, I love you so. Hey baby, let's go. Let's go sailing on my boat by the light of the silvery moon. You bastard. You fucking bastard. You were right, you piece of shit. I couldn't live with it.
Morning. You look like hell. Thanks, I needed that. You're struggling to sleep. Yeah, what else is new? Do you want me to make you something to eat? No, I'll be fine. I'll grab something on the way to work. Fast food. Come on, Dad, I'll make you some eggs. You're too good to me, you know that. I thought you'd quit. I'm trying. Not very hard by the looks of it. I guess it helps with the stress of the job. You going to the Halloween party tonight? I don't think so. Maybe you should. Might help you de-stress a bit. You working tonight? No. I was thinking I could head over to the party. Could be fun. Remember that word? Fun? I guess I haven't had much time for it lately. Hollister. Yeah. Oh, Christ. I'll be right there. Sorry, sweetheart, I've got to go. Work. What's happened? Johnny Tramer, suicide. Oh, Jesus. Done shot to the head. What's going on over there? It's a strange thing, really. Did he dig that hole? Well, there's no sign of a shovel around, so if he did, I'm not sure how. His hands? I've checked. Fingernails are clean. That's strange. It gets even stranger. How do you mean? Check out the handprints. Doesn't it look like someone was buried alive here and dug their way out? Getting into the spirit of Halloween, Brody. <laughs> no. It's just... Just the way it looks. It looks to me like somebody just dug a hole in a field. Why, I don't know. Looks like there was someone in there, though. Big hands, too, so definitely a man. Cast his hands in the mud there to boost himself out. So? Johnny got down in the hole to continue digging, and when he was done, he boosted himself out. <sighs> See, that's what I thought. But I got my guys to measure the span of Johnny's hands, and they're half the size of those handprints. So what are you saying? Someone else was here too? Well, no sign of a shovel, two sets of handprints. Maybe someone killed him and intended to bury the body, but got disturbed and ran away. We'll have to see what the ballistics report says. You call the coroner. Yeah, he's gonna have his work cut out from him in this one. How do you mean? Check out the body. <laughs> Jesus. How long has he been out here? Well, I know he's at work yesterday, so no longer than 24 hours. Just never seen a body decompose in such a short space of time. Frank? Frank? What? You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I better go see Edie Trailer. Christ. First a daughter last year and now a son. You gonna be okay here? Yeah, leave it to me. This looks great. You've all outdone yourselves this year. Thanks. So are you going to help out? Or are you just hanging around till we bring out the punch bowl? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me a minute. How's it going, Joe? Not good. Johnny Tramer killed himself last night. Oh, Christ. 
Christ, what happened? We went to the place, you know, where the package is. Anyway, the kid shot himself in the head. He's dead. Good God. This is fucked up. If the police start sniffing around that area, they're gonna find more than what they bargained for. All right, what's that weird little fuck have to do with that? Stay calm, I'll speak to Frank, we'll sort it out. I know this is a heartbreaking time for you, Edie, but is there anything Johnny said or did to indicate that he was suicidal? He hasn't been the same since Stephanie was murdered. None of us have. Did he say anything about that whole business, you know, with Jack Kane? Only that he wanted him dead. We all do. Your men any closer to finding that scumbag? Uh, not really. He left town last year. He could have gone anywhere. Damn you for letting him go. I didn't let him go. I made a mistake. I have to live with it every day. Oh, poor you. I have to live with losing Stephanie every day. And now my son too. You're right. I didn't mean to be insensitive. Um, I need to get back to the station. Do you have someone coming over? I can send someone to offer support. I just want to be left alone. I understand. I'm sorry, Edie. Truly, I am. Hello. Hey, sweet cheeks. You know, the 50 is called. He wants his pet name back. <laughs> I'm just trying to be affectionate. I know, I'm really messing around. How's things going? Yeah, we found Johnny Tramer this morning. Killed himself. My God, that's awful. His sister died last year too. His mother must be in bits. Yeah, your dad's over there right now telling her the news. My God, that's awful. I didn't know them that well, but Dad used to hang out with their father years ago. Speaking of your dad, you uh, you didn't tell me about us, did you? Rhoda, you are such a pussy, do you know that? I'm not a pussy. You are. Why the hell are you so scared of my dad? He's the sweetest guy in the whole world. Yeah, at home maybe, but at work he's my boss, and do you know how awkward it is to get caught with the boss's daughter? Oh, come on, admit it. The risk is all part of the excitement. <laughs> So, uh, tell me, what are you wearing? A thick woolen jumper and a hairnet. Oh, come on, Jim, really? You really want to do this now? Yeah, just for a minute. Call it one of those babe shows on the TV where the girls jiggle their asses up and down. Yeah, those cost five bucks a minute. This is free. <laughs> you are such a cheeky shit, do you know that? <laughs> so go on, tell me, what are you wearing? Who are you talking to? Uh, it's, uh, no one. Talking to yourself? Oh, it's this uh, girl, I know. Don't be long. We've got bigger things to be concerning ourselves with today. I'll be in my office. Sir. Hello? Pussy. Right, right, check this out. Fuck, what the hell is that? Ranny Fanny! Real lack of standards, your generation. Oh my god, we've got a square. Right, turn it off. This is a place of business. All right. Well, steady on, Grandad. You know, when I was your age, we didn't have access to any of that. All we had was magazines. We couldn't even afford them. But we'd always find like a big piles of them in the woods for some reason. And that adds a whole new meaning to the term naturist. So what's the fucking deal then? It's what lads do. Is it? Christ, I'm not missing much. 
So yeah, it's all about the banter. I hear that word all the time, banter. What does it even mean? Well, it's just, you know, needling each other, having a laugh in that. You banter all the time with your little pals, do you? Yeah, yeah, we do. Although, yeah, it can go a bit too far sometimes. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about a lad's holiday me and a few mates took to Mexico? No. Right. <laughs> so there's, there's this lad called James, you know, and he's dead cocky, overconfident, arrogant. So one night, he goes out and he gets shit faced and he comes back to the villa and he passes out on the sofa. So I have a thought, you know, I'm gonna take him down a peg. So what I do is I take a condom and I put it on the end of a pencil and then <laughs> I pop it into his chocolate whiz wang while he's passed out. Chocolate whiz wang? Yeah, uh, your balloon knot. Your prison purse, your chocolate starfish. Butthole! Then why don't you just say that to begin with? All right. Well, I'll make sure to keep my language more pensioner proof in the future. Anyway, right, so James wakes up the next day and he has no memory of the night before. He was so shit-faced. All he knows, he's now got a condom hanging out of his butthole. So he asks us, what happened last night? And so we tell him. I say, well, mate, we saw you chatting with this lad at the bar, and next thing we know, you've left with him. So James, he starts freaking out, because he thinks he's been on the business end of a stranger's pork sword. Oh, come on, pork sword means cock. Yeah, yeah, I know. Description kind of tipped me off on that one. All right, all right. So James, he's in tears, and he calls his girlfriend, and he confesses to his first gay experience, and he catches the next flight back home. And I didn't tell him the truth until six months later. <laughs> so technically, the only one that did anything gay was you. How'd you figure that? You stuck a pencil in his butt. Yeah, but that's not gay. It's, it's a bit gay. Well, no, shut up. Yeah, you're right, banter is fun. Yeah. Anyway, I've got work to do. All right, be back in five. I'm going for a wicked shit. So the, the kid, why'd he do it? Well, considering where he did it, I'm guessing he couldn't live with what happened. You speak to that mother of his? She's devastated. Did he tell her what happened to Cain? I don't think she knows anything. All right. Well, let me ask you, Frank. What about you? What about me? I don't see you at any of these social nights anymore. Kind of feels like you're avoiding us these days. Did you really think things would stay the same between us? Shit like that changes people. It certainly changed me. You overthink everything, that's your problem. We did the right thing, justice was served. Whatever you say, Milton. Now, if you don't mind, I've got a lot of paperwork to get through. Mike, have you got the wrench? Mike? Are you fucking deaf or what? What do you think? I don't know. I haven't seen anything like this since the Kane murders. How do you want to handle it? 
This is a semi-automatic. Just cock back the hammer, insert the cartridge into the chamber, and the pistol is ready for its next shot. Cartridges are fed through a box magazine, which are fed into the handle. If you want this one, I can give you five box magazines that have 15 cartridges that come in double columns. It's a very, very powerful machine. Quick and easy to reload as well. This is your 38 sub nose revolver. The cylinder holds seven loads, both semi autos and revolvers. They have two main action styles, single and double action. This little puppy, she's a double. It's small, making it perfect for concealment, but it still packs a great fucking punch. Nifty fucking gun. Now this motherfucker, this is my favorite. This fine weapon enjoys the reputation of being the gold standard of stopping power. It's an extremely reliable one-shot stopper. It's not great for concealment, but you could blow a hole through a fucking bear with one of these things. Fucking love this gun. Right. Some little piggies, they like to go to the market. Some little piggies, they stay on. Some like to eat lots and lots of roast beef. But you, you little piggy, you've come to buy some dodgy guns, so which one you having? Come on, I haven't got all fucking day. All of them. You are a greedy little piggy, aren't you? I'm so sorry about Johnny. When I heard, I had to come see you. Thank you. Have you anyone here that can support you? Oh, my brother's flying in tonight. He's all I've got left now. I know this is hard for you, Edie, but I have to ask. Did Johnny say anything to you about Jack Kane? Like, where he disappeared? He didn't tell me anything. All right. I don't wish to be imposing, but do you have any biscuits? Biscuits? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. In the kitchen. I'll, I'll go and get them. That would be lovely. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
biscuits. Darling. What are you doing? I'm just doing all the decorations. But they should have been done this morning. Oh, well, well I've uh, I've been really busy with all the cakes as well. Some of them are a little bit a little bit burnt, so uh, What do you mean? Um, well, um You haven't finished the decorations. You've burnt the food. What what have you been doing? Redo them. What now? Yes, do it. always have to be like this. Look, I apologise for losing my temper, but this has to be done. Okay. in the borderland between life and death. Her brain drained of the life spark. The white zombie obeys the unholy commands of her demon master. Mindless creatures carry out his cursed will. Terror explodes in horror and heartquake.
in, Frank. Come in. Yeah. Come to Buck's house on Oak Street. It's bad, Frank. It's really fucking bad. Looks like we got a maniac on the loose. You okay, Frank? Frank? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something that I've never told another living soul. Yeah? Something I've been carrying around with me for a year now. Okay. Jack Kane. A year back, me, Boggs, Joe and Johnny, we went to his cabin. We took him out to the field, the same one Johnny was found out this morning. And we killed him. We shot him point blank. Then we buried him. Are you serious, Frank? It felt like the right thing to do. But it's haunted me ever since. Uh, so these murders, there's now a clear link between the victims. Mm -hmm. Every man involved in the killing of Jack Kane is now dead. All except one. You know what that means, don't you? You're next. That's right. There's something else you should know too. What's that? There's a guy over in the penitentiary in Haddonfield, name of Charlie Edgar. He's serving life for the murder of a young girl. A few months back, word got to me from the psychiatrist that Edgar had confessed to the Kane murders. Did you interview him? I did, yeah. And I gotta tell you, when Edgar told me how it went down, I believed him. He knew a lot of details about the murders that we kept out of the papers. So what did you do? I wrote a report. And then I buried it. Never showed it to anyone. It was hard enough dealing with the idea of killing a guilty man. Jesus, Frank. I'm ashamed of what I've done. Does anyone else know that you killed Kane? It's possible one of the other guys talked to someone, okay? But why would anyone be taking revenge on behalf of Jack Kane? The whole town lived in fear of him. They all wanted him dead. It could be a friend of Kane, someone linked to him. Yeah, that's a rational explanation. But there's another theory. 
It's not quite so rational. And that is? Jack Kane is back from the dead. <sighs> well, are you feeling okay? You know, this is a stressful time and everything, Frank. You know, now that hole in the ground. You said it looked like someone had put their hands down and boosted themselves out. Yeah. That's exactly where we buried Kane. His body is missing. Maybe someone who knows what went down stole it and wants you to think he's back from the dead. It's just a lot of things going on right now which can't be easily explained. We have to be open-minded. So what's our next move? I've got an important call back at the station. My daughter is over at the town hall at the Halloween party. Go there and get her and bring her to the station. Okay, uh, while we're on that uh, subject, since you told me the truth, I think it's only right that I tell you the truth as well. What is it? Jennifer, we've been seeing each other. How long for? Four months. Look, I'm sorry I didn't say anything. It's just I didn't want to say too much before things developed. Otherwise, things had got awkward. You serious about her? Very. I love her. And I think she loves me too. Take this. For protection. Go and get Jennifer. And bring her to the station. Got it. So he arranged me at this bar first, <laughs> and he had like seven gin and tonics in the space of an hour. <laughs> the bartender tipped me off while the guy was in the bathroom. I still ended up going to another bar with him, though. He ordered guacamole and refused to share it with me, <laughs> while claiming he was gonna throw all the hipsters into the street. Such a prick. <laughs> In the end, we went to this all-night coffee place, partly to sober him up, and partly because I'd forgotten his name, and I figured they'd write it on his cup. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm guessing there was no second date there. No. <laughs> I think I'll give David a rest for a while. How's things with Brody? Still haven't told my dad yet. I'm not sure how he'll react. I'm sure he'll be fine. He wouldn't employ Brody if he didn't think he was a responsible guy. True. So, have you told Brody you're pregnant yet? What? We're at a party and you're drinking water. That is not the Jennifer I know. I only took the test today. Congratulations. How do you feel? Just nervous right now. I don't know if I'm ready. I have no idea how Brody will feel. It's a big step. Don't worry, he adores you. He'll be thrilled. It's going to be a double mommy for my dad. Finding out I'm seeing someone who works for him and he's going to be a grandpa. He's stressed enough. Hey, there's nothing to worry about. Once the dust settles, he'll be happy. I know how hard it was for both of you when your mom passed. There's no other way to see this than as a happy event. Thanks, Andy. John, that phone number, the one that Kane called when he was first arrested. You got an address for me yet? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, John.
You know, a man who carries a gun doesn't strike me as secure. In fact, I see a frightened man before me. Anton Crowley. Who wants to know? My name's Hollister. I'm a police officer. I want to talk to you about Jack Kane. I'm always open to conversing. But I find it a lot more pleasant without a gun pointed at me. Sit down. What is it you'd like to know about Jack Kane? When he was arrested, you were the first person he called. Why? I'm his friend. Jack didn't have many. I see you shared an interest in the occult. I take it the occult, as you call it, is viewed upon negatively in your world? If it's used to harm people. The occult is simply a study of the unknown. It explores the boundaries of our perceptions, our truths, our potentials. It's neither good nor evil. From what we found at his home, I know Jack Kane was using it. Jack was always interested in exploring the boundaries between life and death. He entertained the possibility that the world with which we are presented may not be all there is. Is that a crime? No. But murdering two people is. You think murder's funny? No, Mr Hollister. What I find amusing is how a lie told for long enough can become the truth in the minds of common men. You think he's innocent? On the night those children were murdered, Jack was with me. We were welcoming in the summer solstice down in Sacramento Bay with a group of friends. We didn't return home until after those bodies were discovered. You and these friends you mention. Why didn't you make a statement in his defence? It wasn't necessary, as you know. But consider this, Mr. Hollister. Would your system have really taken word of people such as us? We are the pariahs of your society. We are the dogs you leave on the side of the road. We don't fit into your conventions, therefore we're excluded and persecuted. Well, I don't want to get into a debate over this. I just want to know one thing. These practices can they make a person capable of defying the laws of, I don't know, physics? An intriguing question. It sounds like your mind is opening up to the possibilities beyond conventional earthbound thought. Just tell me what Jack Kane believed. Help me understand. What is it you want to understand, Mr Hollister? What happened before you killed him or after? <laughs> I'm no threat to you, Mr. Hollister. Please, relax. The only thing a man is afraid of is the truth. So if I'm to offer you the truth, are you ready to accept it? Yes. The Roman occupation of Britain lasted between 43 AD and around 400, before the Romans invaded the Druid priesthood with the undisputed power in the land. But history is written by the victors. When the Romans conquered the Celts, they gave unflattering descriptions of the Druids. Some described them as bloodthirsty barbarians who offered up human sacrifices. Others maintain that the Druids were gentle and peaceful and kept their authority through being in touch with nature. The truth is somewhere in between. You see, the Druids did make human sacrifices, but they were self-sacrifices. During Samhain, especially the 31st, 
when the veil between the living and the dead was at its thinnest. Some of the Druids sacrificed their lives willingly. They believed that their sacrificial blood seeping into the ground could even have the power to raise the dead. Did Jack Cain believe that? His mind was open. Is yours? What do you mean? An injustice was committed. The town turned against an innocent man and he was executed. And now he's back for revenge. And with every soul he absorbs, he becomes more and more powerful. Of course, there is another explanation for all this. Which is? You are the one that's back for revenge. Oh, Mr. Hollister, you came so close to a higher form of understanding, but it frightened you. So you've returned to your conventional earthbound perspective. In police work, usually the simplest explanation is the right one. So what now? Arrest me? This seems like the logical next step. No, Mr. Hollister. The logical next step would be to take a leaf out of the Druid's book and make a self-sacrifice to save your town. Jack Kane is no longer human. He's becoming more than human. He is your god now. And he's a vengeful god seeking to punish those who persecuted him. Only a self-sacrifice will appease him. Baby daddy's here. Oh my god, I hate that expression. Better get used to it. <laughs> I gotta go to the bathroom. I'll leave you guys to it. Can I talk to you in private for a moment? What's wrong? My dad's okay. He's fine. Well, sort of. What do you mean? He's asked me to come take you to the station. Why? You know I mentioned Johnny Tramer killed himself? Yeah. We found four other bodies. Oh Joe God. Johnson, Mike Anderson, Milton Boggs, and Veronica. What happened? All murdered. Oh my God, have you found out who did it? No, not yet. We got our guys out patrolling the streets. Your dad's asked me to come get you. Shouldn't we stay here? I mean, there's lots of people around. Whoever killed those people isn't going to come here. <laughs>
Trick or treat. No, don't. It's okay. There's no pulse. There's no pulse. <laughs> I made a terrible mistake, but I'm gonna make up for it. <laughs> oh my god. I thought you were dead. It's okay. No, no. Brody. Take my daughter and get out of here. What are you gonna do? Just take care of her. <laughs> Dad, you're coming with us. I don't have time to argue. Just go. Dad, I'm not leaving here without you. First time you and I are in agreement. This ends right here and now. Perhaps you and I will find redemption. 
and we'll see each other in heaven. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I'll see you in hell. October 31st is normally the time for a safe scare. The time when kids go trick-or-treating and adults watch horror films. But last night, Dunwich residents experienced a real-life horror as a Halloween party descended into a nightmare. The town hall was engulfed in flames and a dozen people are believed to have died. Several people are critically injured and the death toll is expected to rise. The local fire department have not yet confirmed the cause of the blaze, but several witnesses have claimed that prior to the explosion, an unidentified mass man ran into the building with a weapon, wounding and killing several partygoers. The police department have refused to comment on these reports. WKB and I'm Jennifer Hollister signing off. Dear listeners, Happy Halloween. <laughs> <laughs>